here in, in New York. It's really an honor to be here um, at an event like this. I, I think um, a lot of times uh, when I come speak at these events, I get a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked that we're here um, in one of the biggest cities in the world at this time, uh, talking about the benefits of cannabis. Um, and, and I look back on the history of this, and I, and I think that where we've come in such a short period of time is really astonishing. And, um, you know, I, you've heard it said, you know, as so goes New York, so goes the world. And uh, New York stands at a very pivotal time to be able to get this right, where many other states and now even other countries have, uh, have taken a swing at the bat and, and missed the ball entirely. So, uh, you know, as far as the, the world goes, um, they're watching New York right now. So it's an exciting time to be here. So to go back in history a little bit, back in 2007, I um, was flying my, my paraglider a lot. And um, I became very, very, very proficient at flying it. And I could stay up in the air for, for literally hours, but I, was, I, I never really got landing down. And I've fallen out of the sky uh, several times. And that led me into uh, the gurney, which led me into a series of back surgeries. And uh, unfortunately, I got addicted to, uh, chemically addicted to opiates, to pain pills, um, after falling out of the sky. And it was a really, really tough time in my life. Um, a friend of mine came to me and suggested that I try a cannabis tincture and toss me a tincture. And I thought, well, you know, I. Um, I've enjoyed cannabis and went to college and all of these things, but yeah, maybe I'll give it a shot. And uh, I did, and uh, it was a good thing I did. Three weeks later, uh, I was off of the opiates completely, so I'd kicked that chemical dependency, but I think even equally as important was the fact that it actually did better with the pain than the opiates ever could possibly have done. So this all, this all really happened right at the right time in my life. Um, because at that time I was a real estate investor and as you guys remember the end of 2007 beginning of 2008 that big uh, March crash I got caught holding a lot of houses and so I had to take some inventory on what it was that I was going to do next so I got my family together I have a large family come from a large family I'm the oldest of 11 kids and we had a family meeting and I said you know this has worked so well for me I think we're going to get into the medicinal cannabis business we opened up, but we didn't have, uh, I didn't have any, any patients. <laughs> I didn't have any clients. I had nobody that could come in and legally purchase this. I opened the very first shop in Denver, Colorado. The reason being for that is because there were really no doctors at the time who were prescribing or recommending rather medicinal cannabis. So we had to solve that problem. And so I remember we had to get very creative back in those days. The very first program that I started uh, back then was actually for uh, veterans, for PTSD. So we saw two things here. We saw that the program became wildly successful, but we also started to see that not only did it, did it help with these veteran pain issues, but it started to solve another issue. And that's post-traumatic stress disorder, which is really prevalent among veterans and, and people involved in extreme events met people here in New York, something I can correlate that to, are, are victims of 9-11. Severe PTSD. PTSD was, uh, the, the things like THC and, and CBD, cannabidiol, the, these things were developed and studied in, in Israel because of PTSD. Now it's not on the, uh, it's not in the bill, but I hope that we can change that in short order because I think that that's something that every state, and especially New York, really, really needs. So I, I, I did the program, it turned into a, a, an incredible success, but then I started to see all kinds of other different anecdotal um, illnesses and disease states being relieved. We saw cancer cells being literally eradicated, apoptosis, uh, causing them to turn cannibalistic on each other. Um, we didn't have explanation for it. I mean, we saw um, amazing results in diabetes, neuropathic pain, arthritis, autoimmune, uh, migraines, the list just went on and on, and I really didn't know what to do. So it wasn't long before, instead of having to seek out doctors, all of a sudden doctors were calling me right and left. We had a dedicated line for physicians calling saying, what in the world are you giving my patient? And I had to plead the fifth. 
Um, and uh, what do you mean? Well, you know, this patient's PSA counts are down, or this patient has not, you know, uh, uh, refilled their prescription for pain medication, or whatever medication it was on, they've backed off on. And so that was when the floodgates really started to open. So um, it was then that I really started to get into a lot of these studies, uh, primarily again out of Israel, some out of Spain, and I kept seeing a lot of these different um, these different compounds jump up. Certainly tetrahydrocannabinol, very, very important compound. Cannabidiol, cannabinero, for, incredible for sleep disorder. Cannabigerol, uh, incredible for things like hypertension. And I started to look for these strains, but I couldn't find them. Of course, I had a lot of strains high in THC, still do. Love THC, most people point me in, in, a, in a box that you know, of CBD only, that's not the case. And there, there's 120 different can, uh, compounds, cannabinoids in this plant. There's terpenes, there's flavonoids. You guys, there's, there's a trillion combinations in a 52 card deck. So you do the math. We're just getting warmed up to figure out what this plant's capable of. So I started to give it to uh, some of our geriatric patients for arthritis. Again, they were very, very happy that they didn't have to get the elevated feeling. Some people like it. I think that's fantastic. I do too. but. I'd give it to people for MS, for Parkinson's, for ALS, lupus, and I started to see this common denominator in, in, in these, these compounds uh, work so, so incredibly effective. More and more families are obviously seeking to obtain these types of treatment, this plant and many, many others out there in the universe that work, but many are not able to gain access, and that's something I want to focus on here for just a minute. I don't know how you would feel. How many of you in here are parents? Okay, I, I, don't, I don't know how you would feel if you held your child, your little boy, your little girl on your lap, who is seizing in your arms with intractable epilepsy, you've gone through every option, nothing has worked, and you're watching a television program where you see somebody on TV and a prominent neurosurgeon, and you're seeing this, this child with the same affliction that, that your child has and they're given a natural organic whole plant compound and that child goes jumps out of their parents arms and, and puts on tap dancing shoes but you can't get that straight while your child dies because you live in a different geographic area behind a different invisible border or boundary called a state or a country that's pathetic we're in the year 2014 we should be living through proof. We should be living through science. I, for one, I have never found it harder to do anything, anything in my life than help people through the use of this plant. It has been one of the biggest challenges. And for that, I have to say shame on us. We've lived under 85 years of ridiculous propaganda and lies and greed that have surrounded this. And I don't know when this lunacy is going to end. But I do know that New York, right now, has an opportunity to end it, to stand up, to be the big person, to get this right, and stand up for its people. I think, you know, after understanding Senator Savino and, and even the organizers of this event, um, Lisa Reed, I mean, it, I, I think New York is going to get it right. And, and uh, I don't think that they're going to stop until they do, and I'm very, very excited about that. So I would have to say, New York, don't let these people down. Uh, thank you. We've come a long way in the last eight years. I think we can all agree we've come light years, especially, and in, in even in the last two years, right? So now instead of getting called into governor's offices and threatened jail time, they're actually calling me into their office now to help them set up a, re a responsible regulatory rule and structure. So that that's nice. It's uh, it's nice to to I know nobody likes handcuffs. But you know what they what they've seen is they've seen firsthand the example of many different states who have had the courage and the conviction to come out and do this right. Have they got it all right? No, Colorado didn't get it all right. We learned what we could from California who didn't get it all right. But New York stands at the, uh, at the time to get it right. Let's look at some facts and figures here. Let's look at the reality of the situation. In 2007, Colorado was looking at a $270 million deficit. Now they're staring in the face of a surplus. 
You know why? They replace crimes and fines with jobs and revenue. What a novel concept. Instead of prohibiting, they decided to educate. And so the sky didn't fall. The contrary happened. People are actually getting healthier. Studies are showing that, that teen use is down. And of course, we all know that. You raised your hands. You have kids. What's the first thing when you tell a child, don't touch that? They're going to go after it. That's human nature, right? It's what, we, what we prohibit, we create mystique around. Instead of prohibiting, we've decided to educate, and teen use has already gone down. The accident, car driving accident incidents have gone down. They thought that was going to be the opposite. And probably the most telling situation that I could probably report is just a few weeks ago, the study came out that in all medical cannabis states, 25% reduction in opiate-related deaths. I'm going to say 25% reduction. I mean, people are getting healthier, guys. So education has beat out prohibition. And I can't stress that enough. From a fiscal demand perspective as well as a health and compassionate perspective and let me put this this straight to you once an adult or a child and we'll use epilepsy as an example once they start on medical cannabis and they've weaned off of their pharmaceutical drugs you can't take them off they can't stop it's a matter of life and death this plant is not a passing fad it's something that you have to keep the commodity in their hands. It's very, very important. But this plant's no longer just for those people who want to get high. That's great. We're way past that, though. This plant is showing results for people of all ages, from infancy to geriatric, from people of all ranges of illness and disease states. And nothing could be more exciting than, than to see that. And I want you to remember another term here, cannabinoid replacement therapy, CRT. This is a term that you're going to come to know more and more and more as the years go on. In fact, we should all be taking cannabinoid replacement therapy, and we will be very soon. It really boils down to this, guys. The genie has flown. She's out of the bottle. There you, good luck. You're not going to get her back in. So I think we need to probably address the more obvious question at this point in time. And that's, what three wishes are you going to make? And I hope you make them good ones, because uh, New York, the world's watching. Thank you guys.